What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Byte. It's all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. So let's get to the show and talk about the next big Apple product we can expect to see next. Now, a Geekbench test was spotted by Mac Rumors recently that appears to be the next gen 15 inch MacBook Pro with 16 gigs of RAM running OS 10.9 Mavericks. The benchmark score of 12,497 is comparable to current gen MacBook Pros, and with the next gen Haswell processors, it's really an improvement in battery life instead of horsepower that we're expecting to see. That's been the case with our recent test of the 14 plus hour MacBook Air 13 inch. Now, the benchmark also revealed an Intel Core i7 processor featuring Iris 5200 graphics, which is Intel's top of the line GPU option. And the timing of this benchmark combined with the back to school season makes this a prime candidate for Apple's next product release in the very near future. Now, there's plenty of developments on the iOS 7 front. The Cupertino Kids released their third beta for iOS 7 earlier in the week that brought more visual improvements, including indicator dots on the calendar app if you had events or appointments, some changes to the icons, and the fonts have been made easier to read across the board for multiple apps as well. We've also talked about how all signs point to an improved camera and slow motion capture for the next iPhone, but 9to5Mac has been able to get more details for the new camera feature called Mogul, discovered by Hamza Sud. It's not the final name, but Mogul, as in Media Mogul, would allow the iPhone camera to record at 120 frames per second. There's no confirmation at what resolution it will record at, but here's an example of a non-iPhone video shot at 120 frames and slowed down. You'll just have to trust me, if you've never seen a butterfly in real life, their wings move faster than this. Plus, butterflies are kind of magical. Now in other iOS beta findings, it looks like Apple's iOS car integration feature will be compatible with specific cars over Wi-Fi instead of having to be connected by a physical cable. Apple has signed up automakers like Honda, Mercedes, Nissan, Ferrari, and more. And at WWDC, they said integration could start as soon as 2014, as long as it works with my car that I'm letting you all see right now. Well, then I'm good with this feature. All right, sticking with cars, the Big A was recently granted a patent for touchscreen controls in a car that also include tactile feedback so drivers can keep their eyes on the road. It's an extension of the very basic multi-touch invention that's been adapted to automotive uses for telematics and communication via a mobile phone. You would be able to control things like your AC or windshield wipers, and the screen itself could have raised areas or ridges to offer tactile feel, like potato chips. Now, I'm still waiting for cars to fly, so you guys can let me know when you get that one locked down. All right, in iPhone rumors and news, a Chinese business news report says Foxconn is reportedly hiring workers to build the next-gen iPhone. Foxconn has begun a large-scale recruitment of workers, and a firm reports they currently have 210,000 workers compared to their peak of 300,000 in 2012. That's a lot of numbers. Plus, do you want to see more pictures of the rumored low-cost iPhone in different colors? You have two seconds to say yes or no. Okay, okay, I heard you through the screen and here they are. TechD even made this mock-up video of what the next budget iPhone might look like. People have a lot of time on their hands and I'm okay with that so I can put this video on the show. All right, congratulations are in order for the App Store's fifth anniversary. And to celebrate, Apple is giving these apps and games away for free for a limited time to celebrate. So go on and get them. I would recommend Tiny Wings, really cool game, and How to Cook Everything because I learned how to scramble an egg and it can be very, very difficult. But everything, it's not all happy in Apple land. The US Department of Justice ruled that Apple violated federal law by playing a central role in conspiring with publishers to raise ebook prices. Amazon is still the dominant player in ebooks, but Apple's actions caused some ebook prices to raise to $12.99 or $14.99 from the $9.99 prices that Amazon had charged and established early on. And I'm Asian, so I like cheaper things. Now, the big five publishers, including CBS's own Simon & Schuster, paid more than $166 million in a settlement, but it was only Apple that went to trial. Apple said they will appeal the ruling, but this smells like remnants from SJ and Apple's brash nature of the past, and we're throwing out the bad Apple. Now, we also wanted to address a correction of our own. In last week's show, I gave Apple a bad Apple for only giving consumers an App Store gift card, but I stand corrected. 
Apple is still offering the full educational discounts on Macs on top of giving you the App Store card in. That's a bad Apple on me. We've also made sure the appropriate disciplinary action has been taken. I told you bad Apple! You're a bad Apple! Bad Apple! I told you you're a bad Apple! Ow. My booty still hurts. All right, guys, we told you we'd read some of what you, the Apple biters, want to see in the upcoming iPhone. And by far, the number one request was longer battery life, like Hassan Faruqi, who sent us this picture of himself, and he looks kind of weird. Isaac Christensen wants the rumored fingerprint scanner built into the home button. Earl Atwell on Twitter wants a better color scheme in iOS 7 because he thinks it looks a little too girly. Angelo Capdeo, you like how I said that? He hangs out with monkeys and wants one of the Siri voices to be mine. Okay, well, as long as you don't ask any dirty questions like, what is dirt made of? And Rex wants my face blown up on the back glass panel of the next iPhone. Unfortunately, Apple rejected our idea for the limited exclusive Bryphone 5. All right, thanks for all your entries and everyone that I mentioned. You guys are getting an awesome True Fit Artist Collection iPhone case where they've partnered with some of my favorite artists and two anti-glare films from True Fit as well for their iPhone 5. And I told you guys we'd hook you up. Plus, True Protection is also giving the Apple Byte Nation 25% off everything on their online store with the promo code CNET25. So check out their stuff and how your purchases will also benefit organizations that help preserve our planet. So we do good things here. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Send us your email to theapplebyte at cnet.com. I'm Brian Tong. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys next time for another Bite of the Apple. Did you say harder? Uh, 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 uh.